me sort of sitting in parliament trying to imagine can democracy rethink its public sphere where truth matters, where pluralism means better debate, where um, um, where self-expression isn't in denial of, doesn't undermine you. So I think there's three things for us to think about and then we can maybe talk about them. So one of them is, I do think there's a regulatory piece. So I was talking about it with one of the classes earlier today. So I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself. Um, there's a lot of attempts to sort of regulate content on the internet. There's so much disinformation. There's all these attacks on, on Maria Ressa, for example. We've got to go after every piece of content and take it down. Now, I would love to, when I see my relatives, I'm not going to use the word in-laws, I'm going to use the word relatives, post something really, really stupid about the war in Ukraine, the Russian invasion in Ukraine. On Facebook, I'd love to call up Facebook and go, my relative has said something wrong and stupid. Can you take it down? Which is what you do with the TV channel. The regulator, we have regulators around television in England, and, and you do here as well. They're just not around news, but they do exist. I mean, you can do that. You can make a complaint, and the TV channel will, will do something about it. But the idea that you could regulate pieces of content on the internet when billions are being produced with every, I don't know, is it minute, hour? It's, it's absurd. We're making this mistake of taking our broadcast ideas of content regulation and moving to the internet. To taking down every time Maria Ressa is attacked and taking down every tweet just will never happen. It's impossible. And, and I think Blind Alley. And a lot of the early legislation around disinformation has been around that. However, we can think about these things as systems. We can think, are the platforms making it easy to create these fake campaigns? Are they making it easy to create a whole network of false accounts to push this information or disinformation through? We can think about, are there algorithms boosting this sort of content and drowning out others? For that, you need oversight of how the platforms are run. The moment they mark their own homework, and that's not good enough. That means understanding how the systems are put together, what safeguards they're taking against these sort of campaigns, and so on and so forth. I think there's a very clean principle that you can apply here, which is actually in line with free expression. Because remember, like, you know, when Maria Ressa says, I'm under attack, the response is, no, you're not. This is freedom of expression. But freedom of expression isn't just the right to impart information. It's also the right to receive. We forget about that bit. And at the moment, I as a citizen or you as a citizen, when we go online, we don't understand very much about the information that we see. We don't understand who's behind it. We don't understand how much money they've paid for it. We don't understand why it's being targeted at us and not the person next to us. We don't understand how the information is arranged. We don't understand why Facebook shows us one thing and not another. So I'm not a lawyer, you can probably tell. But I think you can be consistent with the ideals of freedom of expression. You don't have to invent new laws. You can follow these laws to their conclusion and say, we need that information. We are weirdly living, despite the abundance of information, in a new kind of censorship where we don't understand how that information is arranged. So that's the regulatory piece. And once you have that oversight, first, as a citizen, you're more empowered because you'll understand who's trying to influence you and how. So you can re respond to it. We can also start putting more norms in place about what we think is legitimate and illegitimate use of technology. That's the regulatory piece. I'll zip through the other two. The other one is designing new online spaces. So it's, it's bizarre that three or four social media companies dominate our online space. We should be designing new ones where people do listen to each other, where people can trust each other, where people can find common solutions to things together. The sort of things that the Tocqueville talked about in civil society in America, we need on the internet. We need online spaces where people don't just 
come together to perform their identity and ship post against each other, but actually to find solutions. There's lots of examples like this. There's a, a great system used in Taiwan called Polis, which is the opposite of Facebook. It actually looks for consensus between different groups and finds common solutions to polarizing issues. Now, that's not always great. Sometimes you want to have a fight. Fighting is good. But there are moments when you need that. So it's about having new technology and supporting that new technology. The reason I use Polis as an example was something else. How do we return facts and the possibility of collaborative communication to our public sphere? We can do that through better design, but I also think we need a new generation of media whose job it is in the, to get up in the morning and go, how do I reach people who have lost doubts in all types of facts because of propaganda campaigns? How do we penetrate people who believe in conspiracy theories and reach them? And uh, I think that's brought me full circle because that's where I started talking about right at the start. And that's what we're doing at Arena and many other people are as well. Uh, but that means a real sea change because that means media that get up in the morning and have that as their mission. And that's nobody's job at the moment. At the moment, your job is to find your audience and polarize the hell out of it. That is what every audience and business consultant will tell you. Find your niche, build their identity, no one will say it out loud, make them hate the other identity. That's the business logic. And we're completely locked into it. And we've done projects with some of the biggest newspapers in the world who will tell us, we understand what you're trying to do, but we have to follow the ad tech logic. And therefore the most polarizing content, the one which is most controversial, that beats up on the other political side is what will help us survive. And we're locked. So that'll be a huge sea change to have a whole kind of generation of civic media whose job it is to do that. Mm -hmm.